it's really kind of a two-step process of first getting a listing of the cases, and that can be done um, sometimes through open records, sometimes it has to be done through whatever the, uh, the, the computer services, the information technology section of the, of the county or the local jurisdiction is. And then secondly, once you get that list, to go where the trial transcripts are, where you can actually read uh, the list of what evidence was, was presented at the trial. And this can be done anywhere. I mean, it's not unique to Dallas. Um, so anybody can do, can do that kind of thing. And if, you don't necessarily have to do it with armed robberies. It depends on what you're looking for. It, eyewitness identification was what we were looking for. So what we did was we first determined what's the quintessential eyewitness ID case. Almost everybody said robberies. So we made a list of robbery cases. That's, that's how it worked here. I think a good story would be that the fact that most police departments don't have policies. There are very few that actually do. So that in and of itself would be a story. Or if they have a policy, it's not a very lengthy one and it's maybe not really followed. And the same is probably true for um, prosecutors, that they don't really receive any training about, you know, when you a p police officer brings a lineup to you, you know, prosecutors aren't trained to say, how did that guy end up in the photo lineup? Or, um, you know, how did, you know, how did this guy uh, come to your attention and questions like that. And there's really not a lot of training that goes on like that. And I think that both the Innocence Project or the Justice Project would really be able to, you know, help a reporter, you know, get into those type of stories.